what I, this Qasida is saying is, is saying, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasulullah. You, the, you are the one who have the high status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the sinful ones are coming to you and seeking Allah's forgiveness through you. This is the aqeedah of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu is our wasila, our, our door, our way, our means to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. Without him, we, we didn't know anything. We, no Quran, no Islam, no manners, nothing. Human beings would be in a perilous state. Madan ya sultan awlina say shay Allah fa'az da ustani say shay Allah nazim al haqqani. Tariqatuna al sohba wal khayru fil jama'iyya. Our ways is to congregate, to come together with good ones, with those who are seeking Allah's pleasure. And the shaykhs have all over the world people who represent them with their permission, with their authority. They sit to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that barakah spreads. It is with that connection to our shaykh, Mullah Shaykh Muhammad Adil and Mullah Shaykh Nazim, that we are sitting. On our own, without that connection, yeah, you, you may... As you go to a lecture, you hear uh, somebody who may be eloquent speaker. But Prophet Sallallahu warned us from a lecturer who is alimun bil lisan in jahulun bil qalb. He is very knowledgeable, very good with his tongue, but ignorant in his heart. His heart is, is closed. His basira, his eye is not open. And that knowledge becomes, their knowledge becomes hijab, becomes actually a veil that veils, veils them from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when your knowledge comes with no understanding and no application, then what it becomes, it makes you arrogant. It makes you think that you have accomplished something. You have a big title in front of your name and you expect a specific, a certain kind of uh, treatment and, uh, and you want credit, you know, so forth. So if you have arrogance, you've already, you've already disconnected yourself from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah says, Azama, uh, grandeur, is my garment and kibriya to kibriya is kibar is arrogance from kibriya means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one entitled to have kibriya he said izari is my يعني, it's, a, it's a metaphor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la tashbih Allah la shabih ala we, we're not uh, Allah has garment and he has a belt no. but it means that these two things are, pertain to Allah alone grandeur and kibriya Not arrogance, but kibriya. He is entitled to have kibriya. That he is above all things. But if a human being dresses himself with that garment, grandeur, and wears that belt of arrogance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he competes with me, I will break him. So, tariqa is based upon No matter what Allah gives you, it is Allah who gave you. No matter what ilm, no matter what uh, sweet tongue you have, a nice voice, a good uh, writer, whatever it is, it is from Him. And so the shaykhs, they teach us what? When we come to their presence, to speak, when you speak, when you see the shaykhs speaking, they're never referring to themselves. Shaykh Nazim taught Maybe hundreds of thousands of people, maybe millions of people have seen him and their hearts open. And but whenever he speaks, he says, I am only a mouthpiece, my Shaykh. 
my teacher. You know, not me. I don't know anything. They put me at this door. Like that he used to speak. Because man tawada alillahi rafa, who humbles himself, Allah raises him. So we we we're not claiming to be that. We are trying and sometimes failing. Sometimes we have good days. Sometimes we have bad days. But we are trying, Ya Rabbi, following our mashayikh, trying to learn good manners, the prophetic manners, uh, not sitting on thrones, not um, treating people like they are our servants just because the Shaykh gave us permission to, to sit with uh, and do zikr on his behalf and teach on his behalf. These are all tricks, very, very, very serious tricks of the nafs. And our Shaykh, Mawlana Shaykh Nazim, Grand Shaykh, he used to say that the worst trait that's the most difficult, that has the deepest root, is hubb riyasa, is to, to, to love of leadership, to be boss. Say it's the last one to go. So when the Shaykh puts somebody in a position of authority, he it is a very huge test for them because they will be tested. If no one comes, it's okay <laughs> because <laughs> then you have, you, يعني, Alhamdulillah, we have a few people coming, it's okay. But if you start to have <clears throat> a long tail people following you and and uh, a million people on uh, Instagram and uh, whatever social media, and everybody calling you Sayyidi and Shaykh. And it's a big test. It's a, one has to be very careful not to fall he head first and start to think, you know, maybe I am special. <laughs> maybe, maybe I have something special. But the reality is no. Sayyid al Mursaleen, Imam al Muttaqeen, Sayyidina Muhammad, who is really special. He is so special, Allah, Allah made him his beloved. He is so special, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him to go, invited him to Qaba Qawsaini wa Adna, where Allah, no, no one, Allah, he's the only one invited. If anyone has a claim to say, you know, I, am, I have accomplished something, I've done something, I have something, would be your Prophet. But he would say, Inna ma ana abdun. I'm only out. I sit like a servant sits. I eat like a servant sits. Eat. He would never say no to anyone. He would. People will sometimes have harsh manners with him, and he would smile. A slave girl in the streets came to him. She said, "I have a need." She took him by the He said, whatever you want me to listen to your need, because he was with his companions. He thought maybe she wanted privacy. I will come. She said, she pulled him by the hand and took him aside, away from his companions, and was keeping him for a long time. And it, in, in some of the, the seerah, it said that that lady has, has a, had a mental, had some mental problems. And the companions knew of this. And they wanted to, and Prophet ﷺ sat and uh, stood and talked to her for as until she was satisfied. This is your Prophet. ﷺ. This is who our example is in this month of Shaban. Make too much salawat on him. And we are entering also a, the month of Ramadan soon. So in Ahlillah, the men of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will, uh, will, will, will not wait till, till Ramadan enters before they have their house in order. So in essence is they would, they would start in, in Rajab and Sha'ban to get everything in order so that when Ramadan comes, they're not, they're hitting, they're hitting the ground as they say, running. Uh, from now, one should, if there's, if there's any attachments or bad habits, 
if one watches too much, uh, too many Instagram uh, videos or uh, Facebook or whatever it is, movies or video games, this is from now, start weaning yourself off of it. So that when you don't arrive to Ramadan, it starts. And for people who want to have Qiyamul Layl and Tahajjud and Ibadah, start from now. Start to incorporate your your uh, Tahajjud. At least start with a couple of rakats of Tahajjud. And do some Qiyam. I'm telling myself this. Start fasting. Maybe Monday and Thursday, uh, if you can. Also, give charity. Start getting used to uh, good deeds and start to eliminate bad deeds from now. So that when Ramadan enters, you're entering in a good state, inshallah. That we're, and we can take the full advantage. It don't, doesn't take us a week to get used to fasting. And, and uh, we're not watching uh, videos and movies uh, 10 days into Ramadan and so forth. You know. we, so it is important to, to get ready for this holy season. Because Allah knows if we're going to witness another one. May Allah grant us to witness this one and fast it. But Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Hadith Sayyidina Jib, Hadith that Sayyidina Jibreel came to him when he was going up the pulpit. And every step he took, he said, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ameen. And when he finished, the Sahaba asked, you said Ameen. You never did this before. What was the wisdom? He said, as I was going up, Jibreel alayhi salam came to me. And he said, basically, رَغِمَ أَنفُ مْرِئٍ ذُكِرْتَ عِنْدَهُ وَلَمْ يُصَلِّ عَلَيْكَ that May he be humiliated, the one who, when you are mentioned in front of him, he doesn't make salawat on you. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ameen. And then he said, the second one, he said, that he is a humiliated one. Come see. Come, come. That he is a humiliated one. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. If a person has parents, one of them or both of them, that grow old with him, and they're not a cause for him to go into heaven. May he be humiliated. Who's making the dua? Sayyidina Jibreel is making the dua. And who's saying Ameen? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying Ameen on the pulpit. You think this dua is not accepted? So this is important salawat. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Salawat, when you hear Prophet's name to make Salawat on him, otherwise the dua of Sayyidina Jibreel and the ta'meen of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, will, you, we are in danger. The second one is to take care of your parents, if they grow old in your care, to treat them well, because that is your ticket to heaven. And the third one that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, Sayyidina Jibreel made dua, رَغِمَ أَنفُ مْرِئٍ شَهِدَ رَمَضَانَ أَوْ كَمَا قَالَ النَّبِي وَلَمْ يُغْفَرْ لَهَ As Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, كَمَا قَالَ النَّبِي That رَغِمَ أَنفُ مْرِئٍ May he be humiliated, Sayyidina Jibreel is making dua. May he be humiliated, a person who witnesses Ramadan and he doesn't reach Allah's forgiveness. This is very important. We are entering this Ramadan now, soon. Let us take full advantage and we make intentions from now, Ya Allah. We are weak ones and we are intending to, to uh, treat this Ramadan and to take full advantage of it as you would like us to, inshaAllah, without any shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us uh, this ni'mah and, and may we May we witness many Ramadans to come and with full Iman and full obedience, inshaAllah.
ومن الله توفيق بحرمة الحبيب بحرمة الفاتحة